Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Last week, I introduced you to my laundry room. After moving some things out of the way, I completely removed some sheetrock, replaced it, tape and floated it, and then started building out some upper cabinets that will go next to the windows on the washer and dryer side. Since then, I finished building out the second upper cabinet carcass. Time to start adding texture back onto the ceiling and this back wall. I'm not going to worry about that wall because I'm going to do a full tile wall. Um, it'll make more sense once I actually do it, hopefully. So I bought a hopper gun. I've never done this before. This is going to be my very first time adding texture that's not a small repair patch. And usually when I've done a repair patch in the past, it's usually been with those spray texture cans. And those are pretty simple to use. I don't imagine that this is going to be hard. I bought it from Home Depot, by the way. Um, it was like 80 something dollars. I figured it'd be cheaper if I did it myself than to hire somebody to do it. It'd also be cheaper if I bought it done versus renting it out. I think renting it out was like, oh man, this is heavy. 60 something dollars for four hours. And I was like, well, what if this takes me longer than four hours? Then I'm gonna have to pay a hundred and something dollars. I might as well just buy it. So, oh, I went ahead and bought it. I'm gonna get this set up. I'm gonna mix my joint compounds and then we'll be ready to spray, hopefully. Maybe that part, right? The time I got, it is just enough to get. Before applying the texture to the wall, I tested it out on some scrap MDF board I had. You could totally use some cardboard instead. I tried to spray as consistently as possible and then I would go back and spray areas that seemed a little sparse. Overall, it wasn't hard at all, but holding the gun was quite tiring after some time, so just a heads up. I also feel like maybe I'll thin out the compound just a little bit more runny next time. I felt like it left the texture a little bit more raised than I would have liked and I'm thinking it was because it might have been too thick. But not bad for my first time. I'm sure there will be a next. My manager and I took a quick trip to the hardware store to pick up some 1x3 select pine boards so I could start creating my doors for the cabinets. I measured and cut all of my rails and styles, which would total to 8 of each. Y'all have seen me do this quite a few times before, so I'll quickly just go over it. I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. It's a place to get inspired, learn new skills, further enhance your skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. I've partnered with Skillshare in the past and it's been a great experience. Earlier this year, I took a class called Sustainable Gardening by Mark Shorter, where I learned how to make my own compost for my vegetable garden. Every year we grow a garden, but I felt like I could learn more helpful skills and be more sustainable and I was able to achieve that. I also recently took a class by Rose Sprinkle titled Interior Design. As most of you know, I've been on a mission to renovate my 1950s home and learning the ins and outs of interior design has been very helpful. Skillshare has new premium classes launching each week, so there's always something new to discover. They are ad-free so you won't be interrupted and you can stay in the zone while you're exploring your new skills. Their entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. So if you have a specific skill you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From learning productivity habits, interior design, freelancing, making your side hustle successful, you can be sure to find classes that will match your goals and interests. If you're interested, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one-month free trial. Now back to the video. Yeah. 
I switched out my single blade for a stacked dado blade so I could create my grooves. I do like to test out the settings on a scrap board before running them all through. After running all of my boards on one side, I adjusted the fence and created my tongues on the rails. To clean them up, I used some sandpaper to lightly sand them down. I then measured and ripped down my 1 quarter inch plywood for my middle boards. The last few times I built my cabinet doors, I've sanded them down after putting them together, but this time I decided to sand them down before. And I'm talking about the middle board here because I'm thinking I should have done it like this every time. It was so much easier. That's what that is. So I apologize in advance to be here all of that over my talking. Uh, I'll try to make this quick. But I went ahead and textured. I went ahead and textured. I went ahead and textured. And as you can see, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I did an okay job. It's obviously my first time using a hopper gun. So I was not having any expectations of how good or how bad I was actually going to do. I feel like I didn't do too bad. Um, definitely have been better. Obviously I'm going to be painting the room at some point and I'm most likely going to be going lighter. I don't know. I, I really want to go lighter. Obviously I have to prime. So mostly because a lot of it is new sheetrock. If I just put paint on there, it's just going to soak up all of that paint. So I'd rather give it a good coat of primer and then go in with regular paint. If I'm in the mood for it, I'll spray all of the walls. If not, I'll just leave it as is and then we'll go from there. I don't know. Since I was already there, I decided to go ahead and add a coat of primer on the other walls after all, but I wasn't super concerned about it being even. As I waited on the walls to dry, I went outside to check on the roof progress and moved on to putting the doors together for the cabinets. Forgive me if it feels like I'm jumping around all over the place, I didn't want to wait around for things to dry and not move on to something else while I could. As most of you know, I only work on my projects when my little one is asleep, so I have to make the best of the time that I get. So while I waited on the doors to dry, the walls were already mostly dry, I moved on to adding new window trim. I did have to use my multi-tool to remove a small amount of the trim that surrounds the window so that I could insert the bottom ledge. I secured the trim with brad nails.
and I repeated the same thing on the second window, but I made sure to put the top piece before measuring and cutting the sides and that gave me a much more accurate miter when I joined them. Before I sleep, hear the crickets through the moon, side side and and once again, and not for the last time, of course, I cleaned up some more. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the baseboards that I never removed, just so they're out of the way, because the next thing to do is to remove this flooring, and I need those to come up in order to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't have that many boards to take off. I'm gonna take off the door trim too, so. There's only a few boards left. Shouldn't take me very long. When removing baseboards, if you don't want to mess up your paint or you don't want to mess, you don't want to risk it peeling up, always score it with your knife before you go in. Okay, so I ran this um, hammer drill from Home Depot, and I believe it's like seventy something dollars for a whole day, and half of that if it's like for four hours. So I'm gonna try and get it done in four. Well, before nine o'clock, it's like seven o'clock now but I don't know if I'm gonna get, be able to get everything up and all of the mortar that gets stuck on there. Um, but yeah, this is what it comes with. And then we have your attachment bit. I don't know what these are called. This is my second time doing this. And the first time I did it, it went super smooth. Um, I did it in my washroom in the same space it went pretty quickly i was able to get it up and done within like i think it was like 20 minutes or so so i'm expecting this to go pretty easy and smooth hopefully we'll see how it goes but i'm um, just gonna get this set up and ready and we'll start bringing up this tile I started off with cleaning as I was going, but I quickly stopped and now I regret it because I have a pile of towel I have to clean up.
so be sure to stay tuned for the next video we have tested out cabinet colors which i think i've decided which one i'm gonna go with let me know which one your favorite is out of these samples i didn't get to hang the cabinets in this video since my indecisive brain hadn't chosen a color at the time i figured it's best to paint them before adding them to the wall i've also decided on the flooring so that will be going in pretty soon Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you enjoy watching DIY videos just like this and turn on your post notification bell so you don't miss out on the laundry room remodel. I love y'all be kind and I'll see y'all next week. Bye!